summer is the time to enjoy a healthy picnic with tasty food. Picnics are a wonderful way to spend a sunny summer day with family and friends. I love it when it is spontaneous. Go to a park, a lake, the seaside or by the riverside. It is even fun to picnic in the backyard. Our bodies love being nourished from the earth, the sky, and the clean air. 7 Tips for a Healthy Picnic 1. Bring Healthy Tasty Food 2. Stay Healthy Food poisoning is very common when going on picnics. There is no reason to suffer if you take a few simple precautions. Much food safety is related to meat so if you eliminate meat like I do, then there is one less thing to think about. Wash your hands, before preparing food and right on site. Set up a water container with a spigot and soap to wash hands. As a very last resort, waterless hand sanitizers or disposable hand wipes can be used. I always carry a sanitizer made with safe natural ingredients so I don't pollute myself and the environment with chemicals. Wash watermelon skins. Skins of thick skin fruits and vegetables transport bacteria from all over the world. Scrub them well before cutting so as not to transfer bacteria to the inside of the fruit or vegetable. Keep food cold. Potato and pasta salad should be kept cold until serving. Mayonnaise is not the main problem with these salads. Potatoes, eggs, and pasta can produce harmful bacteria. Chill them before combining to make the salad. Keep the salads and all fresh foods cold till serving and after serving 3. Avoid gets done, naturally. D. The main ingredient in most mosquito repellents, has been controversial about its potential harm to your health at suggested doses, but no one would try to argue that it is good for your health. Why are we using valuable earth resources to manufacture and transport something that in the long run is questionable for individual health and negative to the environment? Citronella has been the most common alternative to DEET formulas. This doesn't last as long but may be more than adequate for a picnic. Essential oils have also been used as repellents. These generally are even less effective on the mosquito or fly side but actually are good for your health. I just found a good one I like called Citronella Outdoor Lotion that has citronella, eucalyptus, and tea tree oil in it. What is your favorite repellent? 4. Protect yourself from the sun, naturally. Many people are concerned that popular sunscreens have additives which when absorbed through the skin, have long-term health consequences. I don't use creams very much myself. Native cultures who deal with a lot of sun in the desert protect their skin. They don't expose it in muscle shirts and bikinis. I follow their example and wear a hat or long sleeves. I'm interested though, in what sunscreens have you found that work? 5. Stay green and clean up. Being green means thinking about everyone long term, not just yourself. Take your garbage home or throw it in the garbage and recycle bins to prevent attracting yellow jackets, rodents, or other wildlife. Keep our nature beautiful. If you use the grill then clean it before you leave and place trash in a covered bin so the animals and bugs don't get in. 6. Always have a backup plan. Some parks have covered buildings with picnic tables. We have sometimes had to picnic from an open-doored car. If the worst happens even a picnic indoors is still fun. 7. Keep it simple. And casual, it does not take much to have a great picnic. A basket, a blanket and a loaf of bread is traditional. Sometimes I just throw a few snack items into a bag and go for a walk and picnic when the time comes. Picnics need to stay in the laid-back category. Imitate the French. They know how to have fun. The word picnic comes from the French word picnic. Originally at these picnics, everyone would bring food to the event in a way similar to what we call potlucks today, and they were indoors. After the French Revolution, royal parks were open to the public and picnicking became a popular activity. At that point we would all start getting ready to go. Within half an hour we all piled into the back of our pickup truck and off we went to some secluded wild spot near Edmonton where there were no other people just our family. We would gather twigs and wood, our father would build a fire. After it was going, potatoes and onions were put straight into the fire without foil as we did not use it in those days. Yes, 
They came out black so we would cut into them and eat what was in the middle with butter and it was so yummy.